Welcome to this podcast designed to prepare students to master the 2013 Washington State Biology and of course assessment. I hope that whether you're a student, a parent, or an educator, you'll get a lot out of tuning in. The main goals for this podcast are to, one, become familiar with the types of questions that will be featured on the EOC. Number two, to closely examine a practice scenario and evaluate where and how points can be earned. And lastly, to become aware of the common ways to earn points and the pitfalls to avoid that might cost students points when answering this type of short answer prompt. The title for this podcast is uh, Strategies for Responding to a Redesign Prompt. And then as a reminder, students beginning the class of 2015 and beyond are required to pass the Biology EOC as a a state graduation requirement. So hopefully this uh, podcast will help uh, both uh, students, educators, and parents to to navigate that challenge and to uh, successfully pass the Biology EOC. There are three types of questions on the EOC. There are multiple choice questions, completion questions, and short answer questions. Uh, Short answer questions are uh, about 20% of the total um, EOC itself. So these are good things to focus on. So redesign is the last of the seven short answer types that are featured here in the podcast series. And a couple of words to make sure we understand before we move forward. Uh, First of all, a system is a set of things that work together as parts of a mechanism or they're an interconnecting network. So if you remove one or more of the parts or if those parts fail, then the entire system fails. So some common uh, examples would be like a cell phone, a computer, a car, your human body. And then redesign means to make a new design which can be considered a plan or a drawing to show how something should look or work. So for example, if we have this ergonomics for the computer workstation design, you'll see that there's all these different components that make up a um, comfortable uh, workstation with the, the, the seat and the placement of the monitor and the keyboard. And so this would be an example of, uh, of a design or a redesign. So in uh, unpacking this scenario, we, we go back to an ELC uh, practice item that was released by OSPI. And this one's called Blueberry Blues featuring Jose and Tasha. And the, the, the gist of this is um, their uh, neighborhood garden is not producing um, many blueberries. And so they want to increase the blueberry production. And so the uh, problem and the research problem is, is listed and also a variety of uh, plant requirements are listed in the table in the middle of the screen and then that goes on to uh, the next page which is uh, various steps to the plan and then they have a diagram of this uh, blueberry plant garden with the, the bee house in the middle and um, the question here is Tasha and, and Jose want to improve the soil in the garden by increasing the population of worms in the soil. The point of that is that they think that, that increases the amount of blueberries. So the redesign that we're going to be focusing on this podcast is actually kind of the next step in this um, scenario. So kind of piggybacking on the blueberry blues scenario, um, teachers at uh, my high school, Kent Ridge, had put together um, this scenario and uh, again, it features Jose and Tasha, and they didn't get the results that they were hoping for to improve the soil in the garden by increasing the worm population. So they decided to redesign their soil system to solve the problem. So you're prompted to use one or more of the materials listed here to make a change to the original system. So if the problem is not solved by worms, then what else might improve the number of blueberries that are produced? So you could use bark or additional water or both. And so make sure that you describe how you would use the materials to redesign the system, keyword how, and then explain how your redesign would solve the problem better than the original system or solution. So in this particular case, we have two attributes. Did you describe the redesign? And then did you describe how that improvement would um, yield more blueberries? Did you explain how your suggestion is better than the original. So did you clearly describe what you would do with the materials? So what are you going to do with the bark? What are you going to do with the water? And how would that be an improvement? And then how does that redesign solve the problem better than the original? So pretty simple, straightforward. Again, nothing that you need to memorize going into the EOC. You simply need to read carefully the prompt and then respond to the prompt as carefully and as thoughtfully as you can. 
So here's an example of a two-point response. Jose and Tasha should add a layer of bark on top of the soil surrounding the blueberry bushes to a depth of 10 centimeters, especially around the base of each bush. Then they should take a hose and water the blueberry plants twice a day for 20 minutes, beginning at 8 a.m. and also at 8 p.m. And they'll do so for four weeks and making sure that the bark is especially wet. So that's what they're going to do with both the bark and the water. And they're specific in explaining how deep the bark layer should be. They also explain very specifically when and for how long the watering should be done. And then with those changes, the blueberry plants will get more water because the bark will be more moist. So it acts like a sponge or a reservoir of water. So their thinking is with more water, the plant will be able to make more sugar from photosynthesis. And it's that change that will allow the plants to produce more blueberries. So this would be a, a good example of a two-point response where very clearly they're talking about what they would do with the listed materials and they would explain how with those materials they're actually making an improvement. A one-point response does a similar job but it doesn't go into as great a depth so it falls a bit short of the mark. So here they, they talk about having the same uh, depth of 10 centimeters of bark and they talk about watering the plants but they don't go into much detail about how those changes are going to benefit the blueberries. So how is it going to solve the problem of I want more blueberries? So they don't talk about the role of water in photosynthesis and how photosynthesis makes sugars which ultimately are what berries are made of. And then a zero point response you'll see it's uh, very basic, very vague, uh, plainly talk about adding bark and water and then you know presto changeo you've got blueberries so they've not really addressed the details of what they're going to do with the bark how they're going to add that to the garden that they're attending and then they have no clue as to um, what those two ingredients are going to do to improve the um, mass of the blueberries or the number of blueberries so some design attributes did you clearly describe how you would use the materials given so did you use the bark to prevent water from draining into the soil too quickly? Uh, or is the bark there to prevent water from evaporating on a hot day? And then you also see that in the two-point response, there was a clear explanation of how the redesign of the original system would better solve the problem by getting more water to the roots, which leads to more photosynthesis, and then more, to photos more photosynthesis and more sugars means more berries. So some takeaways as we wrap this up. Uh, responses using materials other than those listed in the original scenario or in the list that you were given, for example, the bark and the water, may not be credited. So you want to really limit your answers to the materials listed. So imagine that you have a box and only the supplies in that box are those things that are listed on the EOC. So you can't go outside of that box and bring in different resources so you know stick to the prompt materials from the original system may be used so, so if you go back to the original scenario at the beginning with um, the worm issue any of those items could be used so they should give you enough to to solve your problem reasonably and then another takeaway is that a response which creates a new type of system or a change the problem being solved may not be credited so if you talk about going to the hardware store and buying new blueberry bushes and planting those or if you talk about a, a strawberry uh, patch down the road that has no bearing on the blueberries so you want to make sure that you stick to the prompt I think that's going to be the easiest way for you to to get these points so that wraps up uh, this podcast I appreciate so much for you joining in you should have seen that this short answer item prompt titled redesign has two attributes and you must score both of them to earn maximum points. You saw three sample student responses, each of which earned various points from zero points to two points based on how well they matched the rubric. And then finally, you learned how to avoid some simple mistakes that might cost you points when responding to this type of scenario on the EOC. Please direct any comments or questions to me at the email address provided on the screen. Good luck, and I hope this helped.